Hello, welcome to McKinley. You might remember from one of my earlier videos about RFID and how we had the problem of tracking 600 wagons. Where were they? Can we, can we manage them? Well, we've made some great progress and it's time to share that with you. So on a quick recap of why we want to use RFID. We've all, well quite a few of us out there will have heard of transponding in railcom and they work but they're very specific to locomotives that have been selected by a throttle or whatever and what we wanted to do was to track the location of wagons and people you can imagine what uh, barcodes would be. Well this is effectively a digital version of that if you like. It's non-printed um, and we've been working very closely with a a small technical company based in Leicestershire called Excel Technology Limited, but it's not like the spreadsheet, it's with two C's, so no X. So they've done a great job and worked really hard with us to get things working. So let me just quickly walk you through the things that we've got and the advances that have been made. So where we started off with them, they have some slightly unusual names. This is called the pepper board, and this was the antenna that we were using, which was 50 millimeters square, so five centimeters by five centimeters. And this plugs into here, there like that. This is powered, and this thing talks over Wi-Fi. And this goes under the track. And we were getting okay results with this one. Um, and then we tried different barcodes with them, and we've been lots and lots and lots of tests with these guys. Anyway, these clever boys, they said, we can come up with something better. And I've got this in the bag because it's just arrived today. Honestly, like Santa Claus is brilliant. Excel Technologies arrived. I want to get rid of the filming crew so that we can get on and start sticking this stuff in. So this is the smaller ones, which we tried out a few weeks ago. And they tuned them specifically to work with all the metal interference of the tracks and the rails. Oddly enough, the current and the DCC signal does not affect it at all. And I don't understand why, except to say that DCC signals at about 12 kilohertz, and this stuff works at 13 megahertz. So it's a bit like long wave interfering with FM. They just don't, they just don't interfere. So we're using these small um, antennas under the track, uh, together with these pepper boards. And the results are astounding. And we're gonna show you in a minute the results that have come out as we've been running the Lima coach train round time and time and time again. In fact, it blew us away, it was so good. I was surprised. Um, we also got them to develop something different for us. We got them to develop a multiplexing board. So this is like the pepper board I mentioned, except that it's got eight antenna ports on it. And the reason we thought about using this is in areas where we want lots and lots of RFID antennas, like in a marshalling yard or a goods yard, it's quite expensive in terms of real estate to install these under the board. It takes a lot of space up. So what we wanted to do was have one of these here. So we've installed it in Sheffield and we put the small antennas in here. So we've got these antennas in this tracks here. They're We've covered these ones up, but you might just see this red one here, where there's the old imprint of the 50 millimeter square uh, old one being replaced by this little diddy thing that hides under the track. And this is all well and good for new layouts and for new track work, but we have a solution for the other bits. But let me explain how this multiplexer works. Although it's got eight ports, it's not monitoring them all at the same time. What it does is it opens up the door, the first door to this one. It powers it up, it checks to see if anything's above it. And if there isn't, well if there is, it reads it. Anyway, it then shuts it down and it goes to door two. It can only have one door open at a time, if you think of the metaphor. So if things were going through very quickly and the door was shut, it might not see it. But we're putting this in siding areas where we're using shunters to drive trains at a sort of scale 15 to 20 miles an hour. I imagine Bernie might go faster, but we've limited the shunting speeds in our um, ESU chipsets, but I haven't told him yet. That'll fox him. But these things will work really well because it, the, 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 so the velocity of the wagons just, just doesn't overload it. So they developed this, and that's an outstanding result. And then the final component, which is worth adding, is where we're going to be putting RFID into the existing layout. 
um, we wanted something which would be non-disruptive to as much as possible to the existing track work. Obviously cutting out a small little 25 by 25 millimeter square isn't so bad as a 50 by 50, it's one quarter of the surface area. But these things are designed to go in between the track like that. And they can cope into fourth and third radius as well. And they work just as well. So in areas where it proves to be really difficult getting antennas under existing track, we've got these. The difference between these two here is that we've coated one in the, the heat shrink. You can buy big flat tubes of this stuff. We just slide it over, pull the cabling through, and then Pete applies his heat gun, shrinks it all down, so it disguises it and protects it. So that works really well in terms of not having great big green blobs in the middle of Manchester Goodyard. We can have these little black blobs without the yellow tag on it. That's to help us debug things. So that is the technology update and it's an amazing set of results. So let me just quickly show you what I mean by where we have with our wagons. We use this phrase triplets. You'll keep hearing us talk about that. And it came from the idea that if you want to have modestly or reasonably scale length trains of 20, 25 wagons coming into a station and you need to shunt them all around, it would take you an hour to marshal 25 or 24 distinct wagons into different spots. But if we put them into sets of three and marshal them around, it means you've only got up to eight, eight blobs, eight triplets to shove around the layout, which means that we cut that, that working time down to 15 to 20 minutes which means we can have more trains coming through, more destinations, and keep people busy and interested without the layout being quiet. And the way we put it, if I push this triplet over, you will see that we've got sponge on all of them just in case we need to swap wagons, and the RFID tag is on the base of the middle wagon. And all of these triplets have all got the same around this layout. Um, and basically when that wagon goes over that reader, and here's an interesting point to just understand, if the wagon isn't in this yard, and it's all about databases, every model railway should have a database in my <laughs> mad opinion. The database, when this wagon goes over that reader, the database, the system will recognise that it's gone over that, and it will say, where was its last location? If its last location wasn't D7, which is this sidings number, then it will say, well, it must have just gone in because it's gone over that. And if it goes over it again, it can say, where was it before? It was in D7. Ah, oh, well, it must be in the headshunt area now. And so we can use some smart logic with this RFID to locate wagons. So if we've got a wagon that's got to be unloaded in, suppose this was a brewery siding, and this comes in, and it's appropriate van or truck to go in the brewery siding, and it's full of stuff to be unloaded in the siding, it will do it once it's known it's gone in. It'll have to wait 10, 15 minutes before they can take it back out. But if you put this thing into... Um, a siding that wasn't appropriate, it will just stay loaded. It won't unload that wagon. <laughs> and you'll lose points and have to go and make tea. So it's going to be an interesting journey and we're going to get to the freight management side in another video. But we, what we wanted to do today was to share with you the success we've had with this stuff working because it surpasses my expectations. So now we're going to go over to Ian who's going to show us the data coming through on the computers. So let's see it in action and run some trains. You can see the way it's coming over the reader now. As you can see, it's fairly decent speed. The speed's quite good. And as you can see, there should be 14 reads for the two, for the seven coaches. We'll then feed into a block on the display. It's not the same block, but it shows you what comes through onto the reader. And then we've taken all this data that was previously been shown, and then we've exported it out into an Excel spreadsheet. When we look at the Excel spreadsheet, we can see that we got a perfect read every time. But the really surprising thing that we all got with these results that we never got before is we were actually reading the loco, and that just blew us away. We'd never got the locos to work before, and now they're reading. And this opens the door for, for all sorts of useful features in, in the freight management, to be able to track the locos 
as well as the wagons, is going to make the life of the station manager and operators at the station is a lot easier. So there you see the results. It's just fantastic news. And that parcel that arrived today, I can't wait to start get us testing on putting the new antennas in where we've got the old ones and actually thrash it continuously with the freight manager software because Steve Winter built the freight manager software during the end of first lockdown and we haven't been able to do a thing with it. And here we are ready. Sheffield's ready. We've got the panel to control it. We've got the RFID tuned now. And so I can't wait to share with you the results of our freight manager experiments. Until the next time, thanks for watching.